Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Three fellas all dressed in red. Turn on your radio and hear what they said. Welcome to It Came from Gen X. <laughs> this is show number six. April. Number seven. Number seven. That's what I said. April number seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just test them. Here, guys. See if everybody was paying attention here in our first week uh, in April 2021 in this crazy world. I am Keith Porter, alongside my friends, co-hosts, my brothers, Michael, Skinner, Brian, Fisher. What's up, fellas? Yeah, wait, wait to go to thumbs up. They can see that on radio. That's that's yep. that's that's, that's, that's genius, right. guys. That was your smartest move yet. You can still hear the <laughs> still hear the creaking. Still hear the creaking. We yeah, it's your... the, the creak and the thumb. Uh, mm-hmm. You can still hear that. Yeah, we uh, do it well, the... man. Thanks, uh, sir. <laughs> How you fellas well, guys, doing? Kind of a slow Back. week, but in our little pre-production meeting there, it sounds like we got some good stuff for the people today. We mm. uh pull, pull the stories out, make the best of it. But, you know, it's not about the stories. It's about us. Uh, how we see these stories through the eyes of Gen Xers, which is the basis of the show. For those of you who are new, we are the guys from Reality Football in our inaugural season of this great show, which actually was the brainchild of our own Brian Fitcher. And uh, we all just kind of added on and said, hey, let's get this thing cooking. And uh, we are really, really enjoying it. Uh, We also talk about the dichotomy between Gen Xers and Millennials, and we make a little fun of each and each other. So we hope that you guys join us and enjoy the show. And Fisher's going to tell you how and where and when you can enjoy the show. Yes, thank you. And uh, the fact that this show is entertainment may or may not be an April Fool's joke. <laughs> uh, we're not sure. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So you might be listening to us on uh, WMVU.org, uh, Global Internet Radio, Mondays, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, same recording on podcast. Uh, we're on all major podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. You can also ask your home assistant device to play the It Came From Gen X podcast, and she will play that for you. Uh, all show information on our Facebook page, at It Came From Gen X, all one word. So if that's one thing you remember, it's that. Everything is there, links, updates, fun stuff. It's all yes. there. YouTube channel, we put videos there. We also link the videos to our Facebook page, but YouTube channel, it came from Gen X. Uh, just look for the uh, rubber duck logo with the uh, lasers uh, shooting out of his eyes, our monster creature. Uh, Instagram, it came from underscore Gen X. Twitter, it came from Gen X or at came underscore Gen, G E N. And finally, TikTok at it came from Gen X 330. Email the show at it came from Gen X 330 at gmail.com. You can also email us right from our Facebook page. Uh, click a button to do that or comment on the page. And we're happy to look for your feedback and suggestions and uh, whatever else you want to post there. Uh, the page has grown some over the past uh, week. So if you are listening to us for the first time and getting acquainted to us uh, uh, through various groups and whatnot. Uh, we appreciate you listening and uh, yes, welcome. Thank you. And I uh, hope you remain a listener and uh, give us a subscribe, a like, and a share if you like our stuff. So there you have it. Yes. Gents. Also, yeah. I understand uh, the police department has some questionable video of us too, if you want to tap into their site. So yeah, you're another place you can catch us. All right. Okay. I, hey guys, how, how were you Easter Skinner? Uh, Easter was low key, which is a good thing. Uh, spent some time at Marcy's grandmother's, uh, bless okay. her heart, 85 years old. Awesome. Still wanting to cook dinner. This might be her last year of, uh, doing that, but, uh, got to spend some time with, uh, dad and my sister afterwards. And, um, but it was a nice low key day. Did some work in the basement in the morning, got some drywall or getting ready for the drywall to come in this week. And yeah, uh, I saw the picture. Excellent. So, yep, just plugging along. How about you, Fish? Well, I, I hope, hold on before you go. I just, I hope this mm-hmm. isn't her last year. Uh, we wish her the best. And, and no, no, no. And, what I guess what I should have said, this might be her, this is probably her last year of hosting oh, Easter. Oh, I got you. Okay. I was about to say. Yeah, on, no, man. she's, she's a good house. She's, <laughs> yeah. uh, she's a little firecracker Whoa. that got, got COVID last year and was in ICU for about 10 days. Okay. Came right back out and she kicked his butt and is, 
still going yeah. strong. So you know, you know, my mom's eighty six, and she's a a, a a firecracker if there ever was one. I can't sit her down. It's that <laughs> age group. I'm telling okay. you. Okay, go ahead, fish. Hmm. Uh, I, you know, that might have been Cooper at my door here. Actually, I may have to check out that out. But anyway, uh, uh, I had a great Easter. Uh, went to Allie's uh, mom and dad's in Stowe. Okay. Had a great time there. My mom was invited as well, so that was very nice. That's and, nice. Uh, yeah, oh, so yeah. great, great day. Allie's family's just absolute sweethearts, and uh, so it was, uh, you know, a nice little group of us there. Enjoyed a nice uh, ham, traditional ham dinner, and just great, great time. Very relaxing. So okay. yeah, good, well, good stuff. While, while you go check on our fourth musketeer, I had a great day. We had a great church service. And yeah, let me go uh, check real quick. I'll be right back, guys. You okay. keep going. And the, the family. Uh, good. I couldn't believe how many showed up to my sisters. Uh, there must have been thirty of us. <laughs> it was crazy. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it was. It was a great time. But the, the best part about it is I got to see my son, and uh, that was really all I was looking forward to as far as the family get. I mean, I was looking forward to seeing the family, but that was the thing that was dear and dear to my heart. So that was it, the highlight of the day. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I, I got you. How is Steel? Steel is doing absolutely marvelous. Uh, look at his handsome as only he can look, but have you seen his dad? So, you know, no surprises there. <laughs> yeah, Marianne had a little something to do with that. <laughs> Very little. Speaking of Marianne, <laughs> it's her birthday today, so. Oh, well, happy birthday, Marianne, if you're listening. Yeah. So it's 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 her birthday today. She was my first wife. My second wife, Robin, it was her birthday yesterday. And, and then uh, my former fiance, it was her birthday on the 4th. <laughs> so is that a prerequisite to be in your spouse or soon to be spouse? Is they have to be born first couple of days of April? Is that how it is? Right hey, now. Look at that. What the look heck at that Ford Musketeer. Look there's at a, that. There's a troll. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's a prerequisite for me to run. Mind if I have a beer? No, go right ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that voice that you hear in the wilderness is our. Fourth host and friend John Cooper, who's been on sabbatical. The radio can't see you waving, bro. <laughs> well, he can't hear what you're saying. I got the I got the headphones. Oh, okay. Right okay. Here. He's really loud. Yeah. He can so. hear me. He, he can hear me. <laughs> What's going on, Coop? Hey, I just came by to see if anybody ever was able to uh, penetrate that barrier. <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh, oh heard he it. heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, if I, uh, you listened to last week's though. show, <laughs> you listened to last week's show, you understand exactly what that comment was for. I really <laughs> thought we were about to move past that. And yep. you got to make a cameo. Oh, you ain't getting past that. You can't, you can't get by that easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Keith Suez Canal Porter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> No ship, ah, no ships getting by either. Love you guys. I'll see you next Love you, brother. Week. Hey, you, brother. Right, you, brother. See you, brother. I, yeah. I can't Bye. stand him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Are you, you guys good. ready to do a show? <laughs> yeah. Screenings for their temperature to make sure that they don't have temperature allowed into the park. Well, this gentleman thought that he was higher than he, mine. He refused to to cooperate he said i spent fifteen thousand dollars on this trip to disney you can't tell me i can't be here well guess what the police was called and he has been now completely banned from any disney property across the globe (laughs) uh and they filed trespassing charges against the individual wow Uh, reason i bring this up is we were talking uh so i was talking to my father last night uh right after easter dinner with him and what we got out of this is that you have the right to do whatever you want to do mm-hmm. good, bad, or indifferent. You want, you choose not to get the vaccine for the COVID. That's your choice. If you choose to get the vaccine, that's mm-hmm. your choice. You choose to go next door and shoot your neighbor. Well, guess what? There's consequences for your actions, no matter what it is. And this mm-hmm. guy's consequences for his actions was he's back at the hotel room or off the Disney property altogether. And his family spent time in Disney world, having a great time. Um, so I kind of wanted to bring that up with you guys and got your opinion on that. And I know Porter, with you being the pastor, might have a little bit more deeper uh, insight to the, yeah, you can do what you want, but you better be prepared for the consequences with that. Let, let's start with Fish first, and then we'll get to you. Okay. 
Do you know if his family got to go in, or you're, you're just you're not sure? It's just, uh, the family did great. go in. That yeah, would have been the best all, part of the story. <laughs> that is he good. was we'll, he was we'll taken to the tomorrow, station. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, it, first thing is I I feel embarrassed for his family. Could you imagine standing oh. there as a kid and your father is there, unless you have indoctrin you doctor indoctrinated your kids into that way of thinking or something like that. Right. But uh, I don't know. I, I just so feel bad for them. And yeah, I mean, it's very simple. There's it's a it's not a public place. It's a private park. Yes. A, people own it. There are rules that are posted. You know the rules ahead of time. I'm quite certain without even looking at the website. Everything is clearly, clearly stated. Disney's not a dumb place. Yeah, they're you know obviously they're very smart people run that organization they've been around for a long time for many reasons and they're going to be clear about their policies and everything else if you choose to your point to show up and not follow the stated rules then you have no right to be there and we'll see you later you know so that's it it's really as simple as that so whatever your political beliefs are your personal beliefs that all that doesn't matter if you choose to go there you don't have to go there there's plenty of other parks and uh, you could go to that may not be as strict, perhaps, on some of that stuff. But that's it. It's really as simple as that as far as that situation. But that same rule applies everywhere. If you don't want to follow the rules, you don't need to go there. And that's it. So stay uh, home. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> well said. Um, I appreciate your, your your prelude as far as being a pastor. But I, I don't have anything spiritual to say about this. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, uh, the fact that uh, he thought his money was the bottom line. I paid 15000 I can go. You can't tell me I can't. The, listen, they have gates for a reason because okay. <laughs> they can decide yes. who comes in and who doesn't. Okay. They don't care about your how much money you spend. All right. This is a, like they said, a billion dollar business of very smart people. Your little 15 grand ain't going to make them. They probably lose that on popcorn every day. Mm -hmm. So, now, secondly, I have no problem against anybody taking a stance with the belief for something. But if you want to look at this specifically, we're talking about a temperature reading. Right. That's the part that gets me. Okay. Mm -hmm. A temperature yeah. reading yeah, cannot, cannot harm you in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, th there's no religious uh, overtones or anything like that. We talk about a temperature reading, which I'm sure you had, that guy had thousands of times over at the doctor's office. That's the part that gets me. You made a idiot out of yourself, destroyed your family's vacation over this. Whoop, swipe to the left. Mm -hmm. that, that's the bottom line to me. That's just the dumbest thing I ever heard. Absolutely stupid. So... Yeah, it's interesting what people choose to take a stance on. This is yeah, it. really. I like, pick your battles, man. You know, that, <laughs> I've had it with all this mask and this stuff, I, and I have a right and this and that. I don't no, want no John Cooper on this show anymore. You know, things like that, whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know just, oh, my gosh. I'm just yeah. spitballing here. <laughs> I agree with you, Fish, though. I, I feel bad for that family because if this was a, a one times freak incident they had to be embarrassed as embarrassed can be but um, hold on hold on if that moron ruined their vacation and spent fifteen thousand dollars <throat> over a temperature reading i guarantee you this has happened several times before sure yeah i oh, agree yeah. i agree yeah. with that yep. i agree with that i'm not paying an extra dollar for parking we're not gonna yet. sit here <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. my god yeah. nope i want more ketchup <laughs> that's right speak send the whole thing back yeah, he said it all yeah. back. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I said no mushrooms. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I yep. can picture this guy. Mm. All right, what another, else you got, buddy? Another quick story that turns into a segue into um, a Gen X uh, question I have for you guys. Uh, Subaru. Uh, Subaru. Excuse me, having issues with the the larynx there. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, Subaru plant in Indianapolis has been shut down for a while, and they've just extended that shutdown until May the 8th, I believe. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, their big plant, which is in Yasima, Japan, where most of the uh, the Subarus are done, oh, yeah, they have shut their plant down temporarily for the next month, 
over a chip shortage. So a computer chip that goes into that computer for those cars, there's a shortage of them, and they're going to be behind about 10,000 cars over the next month because of that. thought that was interesting, and that brought up a question I got to thinking. I remember when I was 16 years old and what cars that we had available to us and what was there. My first car was a 1974 Monte Carlo. That yours personally? F- mine, yes. Okay, it, was okay. a, it was a 354 four carb uh, dual um, dual muffler with the gas uh, the gas packs on them. I used to love going underneath the uh, overpasses and just mm-hmm. plaster that uh, that uh, pedal and the sound that just filled that area. And then people, especially if they were walking, scared to scared the nonsense out of them. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but that was what we that was my feelings when I was a kid at 16. The 74 Monte Carlo, these. 70 and the, that car was from 71 to 77 or so were the best cars of those years um then you got the millennials they had the early 80s that was their kind of muscle cars and there were some good cars the mustang product was pretty good there the corvettes uh were okay the camaros were okay but flash forward to today and the kids that they're turning 16 today and all the cars that are out there today what are their I, my question i guess i should have asked my kids is what was their dream car when they were 13, 14, 15 years old? What were they wanting uh, when they were when they turned 16? So I thought it was an interesting Gen X millennial kind of question, and I wanted to get your guys' point of view on that. Uh, very interesting. Um, well, I, obviously, I, I don't have a clue about what uh, the millennials like to drive. Well, I shouldn't say that I do. Um, right now, they seem, if I can say anything, my observation is they're more into style over substance. Uh, when we were younger, we looked at, you know, hey, man, I got a, you know, 65 Chevelle with a four barrel, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And the power and the Mickey Thompson 50s on the back, you know, things like that, you know, power, big tires. Nowadays, I see these kids looking at which cars are easy to fix up. You know, certain cars became popular because they were easy to put the the you know the panels on and the the uh uh thing in the back you know what I'm talking about the uh, fins yeah, yeah the fins and all that other stuff you know they don't really care about the uh the substance just if it looks good so I, I personally I think I had a 74 Carlo too if I'm not mistaken um but I I grew up and I really didn't care about uh cars like that uh not until I got older I just wanted something that 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 drove you know, um, I had a station wagon one time that had no bottom in it. You could see the road while you were driving. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Jeez. And my, yeah, my foot slipped and actually hit the pavement one time. And that Jeez, was just, yeah, that was painful. So like I just Fred wanted Flintstone something that, car, literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Literally. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted something that ran. So that's mm-hmm. all I got on that. Fish. <laughs> yeah. Well, my first was a '74 Plymouth uh, Duster from South Carolina. I had a Duster too. Yeah. This, this thing was really, really nice, and I it was pretty great condition. I mean, the, the interior was practically flawless and i found it in a uh, used car lot on main street downtown akron i just happened to catch and then i wound up crashing the damn thing i ran a red light and totaled mm. it out oh my god oh boy <laughs> yeah but if i could have kept that that would have been a car i could have if i did say if i was able to you know keep it i could have showed it and stuff like that but anyway that was my first but my dream car as a kid was to get the uh like a 77 firebird trans am like just like uh, the bandit you know stuff like that yeah, like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. But yeah, but you're right. It's just changing times. You know, there's a lot of a lot of younger people today. It's not necessarily. It's more of the reliability and the, and the you know, uh, I don't know. I and certainly, you know, the the as things progresses, it's more about the environmental. You know, you know 
spend less on gas and fossil fuels and electric cars yeah. would be more the way. So it's just, I, it's just I, different you, anymore, probably said, for the better, frankly. But yeah, go ahead. No, while you're saying it real quick, sorry to interrupt. Have you, right. One of the best things I've seen uh, in a long time, of course, the Hummer came out and still mm-hmm. to this day takes a lot of flack uh, environmentally wise. But mm-hmm. have you seen the new electric Hummer? It is one of the best things I have ever seen. It I is, saw that. I, I, oh my God! It is sleek. It is beautiful. The inside is amazing, and it's electric. I thought that was the greatest things they've made in a while. There's an electric Hummer joke somewhere. I don't have to. It's but it's just not. Yeah. I so, know, it's, I, it's, I, it's there. I just uh, I yep. chose to uh, let it maybe go. That, but maybe that would have helped your uh, your procedure last week. Oh so my much. God. <laughs> Anyway, hey, real quick, couple couple auto stories I got to tell you guys real quick. Uh-huh. Uh, two of the best cars I ever had, kind of going on with what you said. Um, I had, uh, when I used to, guys remember, uh, ran at the club, Crossroads. Uh, Ron, the owner, his wife had a car that she only used to go bring the alcohol to the, to the bar. That's the only thing they used it for. It mm-hmm. was a white Mercury Bobcat. And mm. for those of you who don't know about cars, the Mercury Bobcat was the answer to the Pinto. This thing was white <laughs> with red cherry leather. Mm. Sunroof was one of the coolest, fastest, most awesome driving cars I ever had in my life. And I, I loved it. He gave it to me. Wow. And Yeah, it, it was mint condition. Mm. And uh, I drove that car. I loved that car. And then, of course, I... Uh, uh, you know, closing up the club one night, a girl called me down in Uniontown in the middle of winter, and I decided to take a chance and go after a, a few uh, adult beverages and uh, passed out and crashed into the medium on 77 South. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So then I got it got repaired months later, and it was sitting on the street in front of the old band house on Allen Street, and I was over at Mary Ann's, my, my first wife, and uh, – while we were dating, and I get a call from uh, the van. Uh, somebody just came through the corner and, and smashed into it. So, but that was a great car. But years later, not a few years later, uh, I needed a car real bad. And a friend called me and said, Hey, I heard you need a car. I work at a car lot. How much money you got? I said, I don't have a lot of money. I just started saving. I got 600 bucks. He goes, I'll be there tomorrow. He shows up with a B- Valair. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Old, oh, yeah. Old, old car. Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile Round, Valeris. Yeah. And it, it was in mint condition. Man, it had heat like I had never saw. It would thaw out the windows in an instant. Drove that car through the winter. It was great. The next summer, I decided to go up to get uh, some movies for me and my wife. I come out to the place, and the car won't start. I mean, it's dead. No electric, no nothing. After, you know, trying to uh, start it, people coming up, uh, my wife come up trying to jump it. We left it there. The next day, a friend tows it to a shop with a tow strap, pulls it. They spend a week tearing my car apart. They called me and said, we got good news and bad news. Good news is there's absolutely nothing wrong with your car. The bad news is you owe us, I can't remember the exact total, a ridiculous amount of money because they had to tear it apart. And two, the the tow strap tore the radiator out. What happened to the car was underneath the mat was a kill switch. And I stepped on it. Oh, Yeah, no no one told me about it. Oh no! So, anyway, mm. those are my car stories. <laughs> wow, mm, mm, interesting. Mm. Did interesting. you ever get it back? No. Uh, I can't even remember. To tell you the truth. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Well, fellas, that's all I got for today. All right, good stuff. Mm. Good stuff, Skinner. All, all right. right. Well, he uh got to hold her hand, but he definitely couldn't kiss her. Let's go to pop culture with Brian Fisher. <laughs> Oosh. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like these random uh, rhymes here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, uh, April Fool. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no, it's good. It's it's good. It's it's better than I could do. That's for sure. Okay, so just a, a few random. Not a lot of big pop culture stories this week either. But uh, uh, I'm still a Walking Dead fan. Mm-hmm. And this past Sunday, they had a very interesting episode. They had the entire backstory one of my favorite characters uh, negan so jeffrey dean morgan or jeffrey am i saying his name jeffrey morgan dean or jeffrey dean morgan anyways good actor yes. uh i was actually he was a very uh you know, very good villain on that show mm. so he 
you know, you know, literally killed a couple big time main characters with a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. That's kind of his thing is wow. it's very intense stuff, but he's been trying to make amends on the show and trying to be part of the community and stuff like that. But he gave his entire backstory and uh, something I did not know is actual real wife played his wife in this in this backstory. So, cool. yeah, so it's actually a pretty tragic backstory that showed how he got the bat and everything else and how all that started and how his attitude changed and everything else. So if you like The Walking Dead, very, very good episode last week. I'm Go sure check that out. I appreciate that because this is one of the most popular shows in history. Yes, really yes absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and I, I was actually needing a couple of Halloweens there with, uh, you know, with the, anyway, I'll, I'll post a picture of that later. Picture of that later. Okay. Anyways, very, very good I was episode. Wonder I Woman, recommend. but I'm not posting nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, so, uh, let's see a couple other things here. The uh, Jerry Seinfeld is, uh, you know, getting back into stand-up. He is now 66 years of age. He did a recent show in New York. He likes the small clubs in New York. Mm-hmm. Just kind of getting back out there. So Jerry Seinfeld, stand-up fan, not so much a fan, interested, or eh, could not care less if he's getting back up there. What do you guys think? I was actually a huge Seinfeld TV show fan when it came mm-hmm. out back in mm-hmm. the 90s, 80s, 90s. Yes, and, for sure. Uh, my kids, uh, Mike Jr., who does our, our who does our post production work, he actually got hooked onto it. On I'm, I had the VCR tapes and I had mm-hmm. seasons one through eight. Yep. And he actually wore those things out because he watched them so much. He was a little bit above. He's a teenager, young teenager, is a little bit probably above his his uh, age range, but he was so smart that he picked up on all that. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, huge, huge Seinfeld fan. A lot of people got their Hollywood starts through that show. If you go back and see all the cameos that that mm-hmm. show had back in the day, so I would love to see him come to Cleveland. If he gets up on stage somewhere, one of the comedy clubs in Cleveland or Akron, I may have to do that before his time is done because I think the guy's a genius. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Keith, what do you think? <laughs> I never watched Seinfeld when it was out, and as I got older and it went into syndication, and I started giving it a shot, it is one of my favorite shows of all time. Yeah, I think it is absolutely brilliant. Uh, when I hear people say, "Oh, I only watch that show," I, they just don't get it. You you right. have to either get Seinfeld or you don't, and yep. you can't just watch an episode and get it. You got to know the characters and why they say the things they do and do the things they do. Why is Costanza so low down? You know, it's so, <laughs> it's so cheap, you know, he's so cheap, you know, and I, I, you know, I, I just love the show. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I watch it every single day. I have mm-hmm. my uh, DVR set to record it on demand. I got about, usually have about 30, 40 episodes loaded up and I just watch them over and over again. Uh, when, just to get a laugh or when I'm going to sleep. That's how big a fan I am of Seinfeld. Um, I, I'm really disappointed that over the years that Jerry hasn't done more for the fans because the show was so huge, which is why it's still in syndication. Uh, I do understand what happened with uh, with the uh, Kramer character, which was played by, uh, is it Michael? Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I forget his name. Of course, he had the... Uh, you know, the the big thing. The blow up. The, yeah, the yeah. blow up with racial mm-hmm. epitaphs and whatnot. So that mm-hmm. might have something to do with it. I don't know. Uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus has gone on to do some great things. Of course, sure. uh, The Old Christine is a funny show. Um, mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, Veep on HBO yeah. is hysterical. Yeah. Uh, little out there, but it's hysterical. And, uh, of course, uh, George Costanza, one of my favorite characters uh, in all of TV, uh, mm-hmm. played by... Uh, What's his name? Uh, right George. Oh, not George. Um, Jason Alexander. Jason, Jason Alexander, Alexander, yeah. 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 He's, he's mm-hmm. done a, you know, a lot of things here and there. So it's a really, really good show. Um, a lot of scenes have come from that show. Oh, these pretzels are making me thirsty. These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> these pretzels are making me thirsty. Boy, I'm really starting to dislike the Drake. Hate the Drake. <laughs> You are so good looking. You can't believe this woman. She's one of these low talkers. You know, because he's a high talker. 
He's nice, bit of a close talker. How about you, Jerry? <laughs> I'm Swan. You sure? You can examine the artwork up close. I don't have a square to spare. I can't spare a square. I need hand. I have no hand. No, no. Hello, Newman. So you're still master of your domain? Yes. <laughs> master of my domain. I am king of the county. Lord of the manor. I'm queen of the castle. You mean shrinkage? Yes. <laughs> Significant shrinkage. So you, you feel you were shortchanged? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if she thinks that's me, she's under a complete misapprehension. What's the difference? Well, what if she discusses it with Jane? Oh, she's not going to tell Jane. Couldn't you at least tell her about the shrinkage factor? No, I'm not going to tell her about your shrinkage. Besides, I, I think women know about shrinkage. How do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? Oh. Elaine! 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 Do women know about shrinkage? What do you mean, like laundry? <laughs> No. Like when a man goes swimming afterwards? It shrinks? <laughs> like a frightened turtle. Why does it shrink? It just does. I don't know how you guys walk around with those things. <laughs> Uh, uh, and as uh, Skinner say, a lot of people got their break. I every, the more I watch it, the more I go, oh, that's so and so. Um, and I love to see people who travel from sitcom to sitcom. I see all these people who were on Seinfeld, and then years later they're on King of Queens, then they're on uh, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, and mm -hmm. it, it goes on and on and on like that. So uh, it's just a great show. Yeah, I'm with you. It's definitely one of my favorites. So, yeah. Go ahead. I, I got to say one thing. In sure. pre production, I said I can't wait to get to this subject. You mm -hmm. know why? Why? We have been friends a long time, Fisher. Mm -hmm. And it took me forever to put my finger on it just recently. Why I love your humor so much. You remind me of Seinfeld. I've been meaning, oh. to, I've been meaning <laughs> to tell you that for a while now. You, <laughs> you are just like Seinfeld. I Thank mean. You. So, you want to come up for a few minutes? I'm sorry, Jerry. I just don't think this is going to work. Really? I thought... I know. I'm sorry. Gee, I just didn't expect it from the way you've been acting. Hi, are you sure you want to talk about this? Because I sure don't. Of course I want to talk about it. Well, okay. I guess things changed for me on Tuesday night. Tuesday night? What happened Tuesday night? I saw your act. <laughs> My act? Well, what, what does that have to do with anything? Well, to be honest, it just didn't make it for me. It's just so much fluff. <laughs> I can't believe this. So, so what are you saying? You didn't like my act? So that's it? I can't be with someone if I don't respect what they do. You're a cashier! <laughs> Jerry, it just, it wasn't my kind of humor. You, you can't go by the audience that night. It was late. They were terrible. I heard the material. I, I have other stuff. You should come see me on the weekend. <laughs> I Thank mean, you. He just hits these zingers, man, on George. With, with a serious approach, it is hysterical. His timing is perfect. You are just like Seinfeld. <laughs> it took me forever to figure that out. Well, any small comparison to Jerry Seinfeld I, I is a, a great compliment. So, yeah, thank you very much for that. Yeah, I, definitely one of my favorite shows growing up for sure. I mean, I it, I it almost failed. I remember they, they, they it was not doing well, and they put it on after Cheers back on Thursday that's night must see television. Big difference. Yes, that was big. And that mm -hmm. saved yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. that really Time uh, slots it, are everything. Yes, absolutely. So I was a fan from day one and recorded on the BCR. Then I have the entire box set on DVD. So yeah, you're right. Even if it comes in syndication and I catch it, I'm just like I have the whole box set. I can't not watch some of it at least because right. it's there's a funny scene every like five minutes. So great every characters, time, yeah. great oh, right. Oh yeah. Yeah, so good stuff. And I, I saw Jerry Seinfeld back at the Akron Civic Theater, uh, downtown Akron here, guys. This is uh, many years wow. ago now. But this is post-Seinfeld TV show. He went on a tour. Okay. And 
enjoyed that show. So yeah, I'm glad to That's see him the getting funny out part, there. I, I don't yeah. like his comedy at all. I it's very clean. You, yeah, you, you just have to be a. Yeah, I like clean. It just yeah. He doesn't crack me up. He says some real funny stuff here and there. Yeah, but he just doesn't crack me up. Right, the, the very observational and everything else. So yeah, yeah, and I but I do like his show. If you haven't checked this out, the comedians and cars with coffee excellent. also yes uh, net, netflix excellent now yeah, yeah very yes. very worth checking out a lot of great great comedians over the years and all the episodes that started out i think on it was some other platform whatever uh-huh. but netflix bought all the rights to it made some new seasons so just to see his cars alone is pretty amazing that he owns yeah. but uh, does it's very very good interviews and stuff like that so check that out okay so hey uh, before you go yeah Yes. My favorite episode, and I oh. don't remember the name of the episode, it's when <laughs> Kramer Kramer has to cook for a bunch of Jewish people at the Jewish yeah. Center. Right. And he's yeah. in the apartment. He, he, he runs into yeah. the apartment with that hot pan and he drops that thing down. Yeah. And the look on his face and the, oh my, I cry to this day <laughs> over that yeah. scene with mm-hmm. him, he takes a bite of the the shlot, uh, shlotska, I think is what it is. Yeah. And he spits it out, and it it, it just kills me. That's yeah. to me by far the best episode. What's going on here? Oh God, what's going on here? What's going on here? What are you doing? I got three kitchens go. Brisket going at Newman's. I got Kugel working at Mrs. Sanfino's and this is Kreplock. Yeah. Try some of this. No, I don't want to. Eat, eat, your skin and bones. <laughs> yeah? Oh, this is awful. Oh, sure. And it's Kreplock. It's an acquired taste, yeah. Mm. Oh, that, that. By yeah. far, and this is hard to say because there's so many great ones. Go My ahead. favorite episode, you probably shouldn't even be laughing at this. Kramer has to go, well, they start off playing basketball. Remember Jimmy? <laughs> Jimmy oh. is on fire. So yeah. Jimmy had the, which was big back in the 80s, the, the big white shoes that you wore that had no heel to build your calves up. That's they right. Look, they look like special yes. shoes. <laughs> yeah, Kramer, right. Kramer puts the special shoes on, and he has to go to the dentist. <laughs> So he shot up with Novocaine, so he's talking like this, and he goes to get a cab and run into this guy, Arnold Dean Try, who is the head of uh, a program that's for adults with special needs, and yes. Kramer, Kramer can't talk because he's full of Novocaine. <laughs> so yeah. He sees the white shoes, and he thinks he's one of these people, right? So they invite him to the dinner. He's sitting at a table with Mel Torme. Yeah. You know, serenading him, and he's sitting there, oh, 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 slobbering all over the place. <laughs> yeah. This is a great hey, episode. Jimmy. Well, look who's here. Ooh. That's the guy who sidelined Jimmy. What? That's the guy who took the bread out of Jimmy's mouth. Jimmy's out of work because of you. Oh, oh, Jimmy! Jimmy wants a piece of Kramer. Jimmy. Come on now. Get your hands off, Jimmy! Jimmy's going to get you, Kramer! Hands off, Jimmy! Don't touch Jimmy! Let's go, Jimmy! Yeah. My lips swollen? No, no. I've been living alone a long time now. Well, I think that's the tops. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to dedicate this song to a very courageous young man. <laughs> when you're smiling, <laughs> when you're smiling, <laughs> the whole world smiles with you. <laughs> when when you're laughing, the sun comes shining through. But when you're crying, you bring on the rain. So stop that sign. Be happy. <laughs> 
Not funny, but it's funny. Michael Richards was a comedian. Michael, Rich- said, Michael yeah, Richards. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I had to Mike. look it up. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's it a shame with that incident. Yeah, because he was definitely it was one of the funniest physical. Oh actors, my god! Yeah, comedic, uh, physical comedic actors that, that was Jack on, ever on television. Yeah, he's like a sure. Jack Ritter and guys like that. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah. And what we're talking about is so my favorite episode. I think there's many, but the the opposite I love so much. That's when George Costanza realized that. And Jerry told him basically, if everything you're doing is wrong, wrong. the opposite has to be right. As, he starts as, to yes. live, his, live his whole life doing everything the opposite, <laughs> starting with the girl in the diner. He, he approaches yes. her, gets a date, yeah. winds up working for the Yankees, the whole thing. <laughs> Just a great, great episode. And it actually made me think at the time, you know yeah. what? There's something to this, perhaps. Yeah, if, really I, if, I, if, yeah. if I do the opposite of what I'm thinking, maybe life will turn out differently. Exactly. And I want it made me wonder if other people out there watch that show and maybe try to I promise do you. that you know, in life. uncomfortable at a party. <laughs> Can I knock over there? It all became very clear to me sitting out there today that every decision I've ever made in my entire life has been wrong. <laughs> my life is the complete opposite of everything I want it to be. Every instinct I have in every aspect of life, be it something to wear, something to eat, it's often wrong. <laughs> Tuna on toast, coleslaw, cup of coffee. Yeah. No, 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 wait a minute. I always have tuna on toast. Nothing's ever worked out for me with tuna on toast. <laughs> I want the complete opposite of tuna on toast. Chicken salad on rye, <laughs> untoasted, with a side of potato salad, and a cup of tea. <laughs> well, there's no telling what can happen from this. You know, chicken salad's not the opposite of tuna. Salmon's the opposite of tuna, because salmon swim against the current, and the tuna swim with it. Good for the tuna. Uh, George, you know, that woman just looked at you. So what? What am I supposed to do? Go talk to her. Elaine, bald men with no jobs and no money who live with their parents <laughs> don't approach strange women. Well, here's your chance to try the opposite. Instead of tuna salad and being intimidated by women, chicken salad and going right up to them. Yeah, I should do the opposite. I should. If every instinct you have is wrong, then the opposite would have to be right. <laughs> yes, I will do the opposite. I used to sit here and do nothing and regret it for the rest of the day. So now I will do the opposite and I will do something. Excuse me, uh, I couldn't help but notice that you were looking in my direction. <laughs> oh, yes, I was. You just ordered the same exact lunch as me. <laughs> my name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. <laughs> Victoria, hi. <laughs> How influential that show was. And you're right. You think about all the things that came with it. The I decided I was, I was and going vernacular. to do this show. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I decided I was going to do this show. Which... <laughs> yeah, that's right. That gets you the opposite of what your gut tells you you should do. Yeah. Anyway, so great, great stuff. Yeah. Uh, another huge, iconic show, uh, speaking of this, right around the same time, uh, uh the friends right so friends which you may or may not know they're doing a reunion special they're planning this on hbo max all the uh, main characters are going to come back it's not like a actual just they're not rebooting it like you're seeing some of these old shows doing with frazier and whatnot that they're planning this is some type of a special and there's rumors now that they're going to sh- they're going to do at least a, a portion of this reunion in character as if these characters have now you know aged and what are they up to and stuff like that 
it's not the whole premise. I think it's more of just a, hey, we're seeing all the Friends actors together again for the first time in many years. So I don't know. Are you excited for the Friends reunion special on HBO Max whatsoever? Well, Skinner, then, what do you think? Go ahead, go Keith. Ahead. You start. Go ahead, Keith. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit you with a counter question, too, for both of you guys. Yep. If you like the show or if you watch the show, mm-hmm. did you really like it or did you just watch it because there were three hot chicks? You know, I, I, I actually thought that I, I watched every episode. I okay. stuck with it. And I think it got to a place for me personally where it's like, well, I've come this far watching this thing and I'm going to just ride it out until it ends. And it was eh, there were some funny moments and stuff like that, yeah. but it wasn't. In my opinion, it wasn't a hilarious show. There yes. were funny moments and things and some nice stuff, but right. I don't know. I, it was it was it now if it launched today as is today with all of the content choices that we have, I don't know that it would have become the phenomenon that it was back right. at that time. But there obviously there was cable, but there was no streaming services back then. It wasn't as much of a Timing was everything for that show. That right. is correct. So yeah, I mean it had I'm not, Beverly, the comedy yeah, I thought it was the funny Beverly Hills nine oh two one oh. Yeah. So uh yeah. I, I didn't again I didn't watch that when it was on even in syndication it wasn't something that caught my eye. I have watched several episodes. Uh there were some that I enjoyed that were very funny. Mm-hmm. There were some that I just thought, like, boy, this show's really, really white. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is white bread, yes. but it, you know, it's it is what it is. I'm, if it comes on, I'm not going to go out of my way to watch it. Yeah. I thought Jennifer Aniston back then was just exquisite. Yes. These other girls were beautiful too, but there was something yep. about her, and mm-hmm. to this day, she's still America's darling. Sure. You know, she's got that girl next door persona mm-hmm. going on, doing a lot of the makeup and the shampoos and the whatnot. But yeah. uh, not a huge, huge fan, but I, I did enjoy some of the episodes. Okay. Yeah, I was not a fan of the show, believe it or not. With all the girls in my house, I kind of got stuck watching it on Thursday nights or whatever night it was. Oh, yeah. Now, my two oldest girls, Brianna and Chelsea, are fanatics. They still mm-hmm. are to this day. As a matter of fact, they still got the clothes with the coffee shop and the Friends logos. And they just passed on one to... Uh, serenity and she just wore it the other day and i'm like i just can't get rid of this show i didn't hate the show it wasn't me i thought the best character on that show was joey the dumbass Mm -hmm. (laughs) truthfully i thought he was funny um he played the 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 moronic uh not so smart guy but his his one-liners were pretty funny uh if he took it for what it was worth see i uh, thought he was corny now, yeah, I well, he was. He was the blonde, corny. The blonde, uh, I can't think of her name at the moment. I thought she was hysterical. Phoebe. Phoebe. Yeah. Phoebe. Mm-hmm. I, I watched yeah. it for her. Character name, yeah. She mm-hmm. was funny, especially when she sang her song You got and played at the cafe. I thought she was hysterical, too. What and, was and, that? Uh, Kitty what something other? Kitty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Smelly Cat. Smelly Cat. Smelly, Smelly Cat. cat. Yeah. That's what it was. My favorite song. Yeah. I want to say one thing, though. It, the show does have one of the great, iconic... Uh, opening theme song of all time. That's true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's you know, very, most, you know, probably one of the most recognizable ones. I agree with that. Okay, Skinner, what, what's our time here? I know we had Cooper stop in, a couple things here. How much time uh, we got left? There? We got about 19 minutes to the end, so okay. we're okay. You forgot one more thing? Okay, Keith, does that work for one more th- yeah. work for your, yeah, your clips? Okay. okay, so we, we know last Wednesday, uh, Kong versus Godzilla oh, started yeah. streaming on HBO Max, and it was released in theaters as well, and a lot of people kind of watching this to see, okay, you know, there's more vaccinations. Are people starting to step back out a little bit more, go to the theater? What's this going to do? And it has, it's been the biggest movie release since the pandemic. Uh, it succeeded Wonder Woman 1984 for Warner Brothers uh, by far. So it's, uh, let's see here, as of the 24th, no, I, I take that back. Uh, see, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's, uh, it earned 70 million in China, China, excuse me, so far, and over 122 million uh, all the way around. So, so it's been a nice hit for uh, the uh, you know, for Warner Brothers Pictures for sure. So, it definitely a you think it's a sign that people are looking to go see any movie, or is it this movie or a combination of both? We got two iconic characters. 
what are your thoughts well, on Kong that, versus that Godzilla? That movie Go should ahead. be dominating over uh, in, in China and Japan. That's sure. where he did his most damage. But anyway, that's, that's right. Uh, we grew up with the, with Godzilla. I don't think it has as much to do with that as the simple fact that these are two beloved characters, always have been. And the bottom line is the movie is phenomenal, in my opinion. I loved mm-hmm. every second of it. Good. It was just absolutely great. So uh, I think the word got out. I see it on Facebook, and, and it's picking up steam and momentum. Have you I, uh, seen it, Skinner? Have you, are you planning uh, to no, see I have it? No, okay. uh, I'm, I'm the non-cable streaming guy, so I've got the, the apps that I can go mm-hmm. and watch from my couch, per se, without getting myself in trouble. Um, but I'm, I'm probably going to watch it this week. It's been pretty busy with trying to get the basement completed, and we're uh, rushing up against the clock with wanting to utilize some time at the camper. So i got to get this done so I can get the outside work. Anyway, I'm going to try to get to it this week. It is one of those shows uh, and movies that it's a must-see. It, it was fun, man. It was very fun. That's good. Yeah, I haven't Excuse me. To, Go I'm sorry. To answer your question is – People are dying to get back into theaters. People are dying to see the movies again. I know I'm a, we're all a bunch of big movie buffs. Yeah, but be careful how you word that. That's the one well, they just might be doing. <laughs> uh, well, yes. Dying. People are, are eager to take their their in, uh, insecurities about the COVID and go to the theater because that's how much they enjoy that experience. So I hope while they're wanting to do this, everybody's still staying cautious and, and ease their way back into it. But yeah, I think people are ready to get back out to the theaters. You guys know I love the <clears> movies too. We we mm-hmm. we go to the movies together. We run into each other at the movies. But I am not in that big of a hurry to get back. So things going yeah. on look better. I'm kind of with you, Keith. There's like so many variants and unknowns and all that. I'm looking forward to getting back, but I'm fine to check these out yeah, at home for the absolutely. time being. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing this one. I just ran out of time this weekend, but I will yeah. definitely watch. I am definitely interested. I did watch a little bit, and I did like the fact of the movie starts. And immediately there's King Kong. Yeah, I mean, he, you know what I mean? To, right away. Beat Kong taking a nap. Then he takes a shower and scratches his butt. You can't yeah. beat that kind of an opener, man. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I, we, you know, more monsters. That's what we want to see. And then it looks like this movie does deliver. Well, on real that, quick, so Barbara, we're still with you, pop culture. I know we're going against my time, but right. uh, uh, just comments, guys, on the third episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I, I think this, this show was just doing. Beyond my it's, expectations. Uh, it's beyond what I expected. It's, it's you yeah. know, Marvel here is with all the Avengers. Yeah. This is up here, I think. It's gone just way above yeah. what I, I, I ever imagined. Okay, spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the third episode. But just to bring back characters like, uh, uh, you know, at, at the end, of course, to see uh, one of the Wakanda guards show up uh, was awesome. Then, of course, mm. you have... Uh, Sharon, uh, mm-hmm. who threw her career away when she gave Cap his shield and the Falcon his wings back in uh, Civil War. So that, mm-hmm. it just they're just doing an awesome job with it. Okay. Yeah. So Keith, what do you got in the world of uh, sports and music, sir? All right. Okay. Well, it's hard to fit in some of these uh, places. I wish I was shorter. Let's turn it over to Keith Porter. All right. <laughs> and uh, let's start off with sports, guys. Obviously, the big news of uh, <laughs> men's and women's uh, basketball in the college vein. Uh, Jalen Suggs, uh, man, just exciting, exciting stuff. Game-winning shot after UCLA tied it up with three seconds left. Yeah. And he hits a buzzer beater at half court to keep Gonzaga's uh, win streak going undefeated. Mm-hmm. And propel them into the championship game, ninety-three to ninety. Did you guys catch it? What you think? Yeah, pretty amazing to see. It's, it's got to be one of the all-time Final Four games, uh, period. Right? It's so, up there with Christian yeah. Leitner's. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I stakes, think so. stakes are high. That guy hit a huge shot, and boy, just a clutch performance. Well, yeah. Let me ask you a question, Skinner. Does it take away from it that when you see something like that and the place isn't packed with fans? Mm. No, I think the feat is just as big if as if the fans were there. Really? The stakes are the same, even though uh, the excitement is more, obviously, if I'm the fans about, were there. Yeah, the excitement would have been 
through the roof. But can you imagine being those kids on on, on both teams, Gonzaga and also mm. UCLA, when they're watching that ball from half court? Okay. Can you imagine the emotions for yeah. both those teams? And the uh, cool thing about it is, you, you know, a lot of uh, players get hyped a little bit. And they don't live up in the big games. This guy is is uh, Gonzaga's highest rated player ever, mm-hmm. as far as projecting and going into the to the the NBA. Mm-hmm. And to see him come through like that on the second biggest stage uh, is great. Of course, they're gonna pl- they're playing Baylor tonight, uh, which is going to be really exciting. And of course, in the women's. Uh, Final Four, and I'm going to bring a question. Uh, UConn, with, uh, one of the best freshman players ever, lost to Arizona, shockingly. Yeah. By, yeah. And I don't mean by a couple either. I think it was by 10. And then, of course, Arizona goes on to lose in the finals against Stanford. Stanford's always been in the Sweet 16, Final Four, Elite Eight, but hasn't won a championship since 1992. Uh, they win this one, and I mean by the skin of their teeth, 66-65. Congratulations to them. Guys, we see Stanford win the uh, women's championship. We've got Gonzaga and Baylor. Of course, we've heard Gonzaga's name over the years, but there's mm-hmm. no North Carolina. There's no Duke. There's no Kansas, uh, so on and so on. Are we seeing a turning of the guard in men's and women's sports, or is this just because we are in an odd time, these lingering effects of COVID? Well, I think the women's game is certainly different than the men's game because the women's game, they're going to stay in school longer, I, th- I think. I don't know the eligibility for the WNBA, but I think there's more mm-hmm. advantages for them to – I heard a story on this the other day, which made a lot of sense to me. It's like that for them, they stay in school. They establish more of a brand and a, and well, a they following. Do. And, and UConn is a perfect example of that. They've been the most mm-hmm. dominant force – for 20 years now, 30 years, but they yeah. have lost either in the final four or the championship in the last, I don't know. I can't remember the last time they won. So it's, it's just, probably been five years. Hasn't yeah. It? Something like that. Yeah. It's good to see the talent move around. I think it's, yeah, good. it is. It is. It is. I, like it. I agree with you. Um, I think it's a temporary thing when it, with the, with the men's basketball, because you got men's, College basketball schools, you got men's football schools, just like Duke is a basketball school. They're not a football school, even though they got a decent football team. Uh-huh. So these kids that are playing basketball, they know what teams to go to that yeah. they're going to have the most exposure. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that's going to change. I think because Duke couldn't play because of COVID and uh, Kentucky. They had a down year, and I don't even know if they would have made the, the final the to sixty four right. if they even were eligible. But um, of North Carolina's got a new coach now, Huber Davis. Yeah, yeah. Kansas was a fluke that they didn't make it. I think they just had a down year. I look for all those guys back next year, truthfully. Okay, right. All right. Uh, NFL news, real quick. Uh, Sam Darnold, uh, thought to be the savior of the New York Jets, according to Barry. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, uh, he's moved to the Carolina Panthers now, and uh, the Jets got three picks from it, man. Do you think Darnold is going to prosper in a newer situation, or he's just not all he was cracked up to be? He didn't have a whole lot to work with in New York. Nothing really. at all. You know, so we'll see what happens. And this will be his opportunity to, and he's probably excited for this, I would imagine. So it's a yeah. good opportunity for him. Now, if he you know, we've seen this a hundred times plus. I mean, if he falters as a starter in Carolina, then he's probably going back to a, a backup role or something like that. Yeah. So this is this is his opportunity. But yeah, and then certainly New York now a lot of talk around. Are they going to draft a quarterback? Well, certainly they are now. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So no, no question. question about that. So yeah, I mean it's good for him. I think in the long run. Skinner, yeah. you think he went to a better team? Is he going to prosper there or what? Oh, I think he definitely went to a better team. Jets, they're just awful, and they've yeah. been awful for how many years? He's had no weapons on the offense. Um, Carolina at least has a decent offense. Their their defense is still suspect, and we talked a lot about that in our other show. Mm-hmm. Um, Carolina hasn't been the same since uh, uh, Mr. Patriot uh, right. the left. Um, Cal, Cam Newton. Uh, yeah. Cam Newton, rather. And even then, they had one or two good years, and they'd just been a, a, a competitive team, but not a world championship team. Uh, Jets, to get three picks, uh, 
out of them. I think they did well with that. Um, yeah. And I think they showed their cards that they're definitely drafting yeah, I hope the quarterback. Both teams, both teams make out from it. Okay, guys, keep your answers real short for me. Uh, Aaron Rodgers will be hosting Jeopardy. Also made a statement that that is his second dream job. He'd like to be the permanent host of Jeopardy when he retires. Jeopardy is my favorite game show of all time. I like things that uh, that, that stretch the brain. Um, I learn from. Um, yeah. I don't like guessing games. I'm a big, huge Jeopardy. Guys, what are one of your favorite uh, game shows from the past that are either still going or, or no longer on? Fish? The game show of my youth, Bob Barker hosting Price is Right. Mm-hmm. Great, great stuff. I loved him as the host. That yeah. show symbolizes also being home with mom, watching. Yeah, that absolutely. Show. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And if, if you'd be sick, sick from school or something like that, yeah, you'd watch The Price Is Right. You yeah. watch it in the great. summertime. That was great, great stuff. So Excellent. as a kid growing up, but yeah. I, but I agree with you, Jeopardy. As far as an overall fun game show, that and Wheel of Fortune's right there for me. But those. Okay. That's an iconic, I, I uh, that, long-term I show. That Go point, ahead. Because you attach a, a feeling and emotion with that show. Yes. Great stuff. Skinner? Absolutely. Both good choices, fellas. I like both those shows. Mine is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Okay. Back when Regis Philbin started it. No, but let's go um, back. Let's go back further than that. <laughs> well, to me, because I'm a I'm a trivia guy. Um, me and me and Fisher, nobody wants to play us in uh in the <laughs> trivia games when oh, they put I'll us take, together. I'll we, be happy to. You, if they remember him, him and I'll clean house all the time. But um, you're we'll on. See about that. You're on. Another, what was that? Woolery, Chuck Woolery. He was uh um, it was a dating, dating, dating. game. Love connection. Love, Love connection. connection. Love connection. You're back in two and two. I, two and two. I used two to watch two. that with my mom, and I would sit and, and like you, I had a feeling my mom would just sit and laugh, and I just remember watching my mom having a good time watching this show. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of had the same kind of lines, but yeah, Chuck Willery to me, even as he moved on from other shows, I thought he was a pretty good show. Uh, was good. Game oh, show yeah. The dating game was hilarious at times. Some of the answers. But mm. I also enjoy the Joker's Wow. You guys remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yes. If you haven't seen the movie Twenty One, uh, watch that. It's about the the game show uh, controversy that happened back in the day. True story. Excellent movie. Okay. Uh, By the way, did, did you know that that's still going on? The Joker's Wow. Do you know who hosts it right now? Do you know? This? Uh, is it Snoop Dogg? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. yes. What the world is the world coming to? Anyway. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> I've seen uh, it once or twice. He's good. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, mm-hmm. guys, going on to music real quick. Uh, one of the big stories that just blew me away this week, this vile rapper by the name of Lil Nas had a huge hit a couple of years ago, uh, uh, dressed like a blue cowboy. And right now he's been promoting Satan shoes. Uh, they are supposedly were the uh, Mike, Nike Airbex 90s. Uh, Mm -hmm. Miley Cyrus was seen wearing them. Uh, These shoes have, they're they're black with the bronze pentagram, an inverted cross, Mm -hmm. and allegedly have 60 cc's of ink and one drop of human blood in them. What in the world is going on? Now, Nike has filed a class action lawsuit against them for brand infringement, saying Mm -hmm. they had nothing to do with it. And uh, this this is just wow! I don't even know what to say, Skinner. You trying to touch on the story before we got on the air, and I just appalled. I don't know what are the word appalled by that whole situation. I don't know the individual. I don't know that, that his brand or anything like that. But if that's what our kids are looking at and looking up to today, we're in a world of hurt. We are in a world of hurt. You know, you can have Satan shoes out, but don't mention the word Jesus in schools. Or people lose their, their their mind on it. I don't know what's going on. Skinner, I mean fish. Where do you get a pair? <laughs> no, I it, honestly, I it's like, you, like that. you know, it's like the the reason they put that out there is this very thing. It's just, just so he gets people talking about it. That's it. we we I mean we grew up with hair metal bands like Motley Crue for crying out loud with a right. pentagram and and they they weren't into Satan. They just like this is going to rile up people. It's going to get people talking about us. It's a, to me, it's the same I type agree. of concept. I agree That's it. and disagree. I agree about Motley Crue, but mm-hmm. I think this is something deeper with this guy. And that's from my own study of him. We'll talk yeah. about it at another time. This okay. is beyond, beyond more than his promotion. Okay, right. guys. Uh, 
one of the old school, not old, old school, but one of the old school rappers, one of my personal favorites from the day, mm-hmm. uh, DMX. I just thought he had a unique voice, unique approach with his music. And, oh, you see, oh, oh, make me lose my mind. Oh, uh, he's in a White Plains, New York hospital in critical condition. They're not saying very, very, very much about it. They're actually respect the privacy. Um, mm-hmm. well, certainly our prayers for him and his health and recovery. Uh, DMX, man, just a, a pioneer in rap. Guys, what rappers do you guys remember from back in the day? And I'm going to just start the floor clean right now and say, don't mention the fat boys. Oh, I was, oh <laughs> darn it. I love darn the it. fat boys. And I know Fisher was going to bring them up. So anybody but the fat boys. Go ahead, Fish. I, it, uh, I liked some of the Young MC stuff. I like Run DMC. Yeah. You know, if they're and then I like uh, you know, the Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys to me, that's that took it to another level with those guys. You know, just it was not. It was just interesting to see white guys with that type of talent doing that. That and, level and of music. I, and you know what? So that's just me. That album was as much as yeah. I loved it. I think the Beastie Boys are horrible rappers. Yeah. Horrible yeah. rappers. But yeah, that that's our music was fantastic. Album, just we unique music. More, that album permeated the high school. It was oh cool. sure, sure did. Um. I'm not much into the rap scene, especially since 1995, probably. Uh, to go back to old school, I listened to a lot of Dre, a lot of Snoop Dogg. Well, see, that's not um, old school. I'm talking about way back when we were kids. Way back kids, Run DMC, that's who I remember. Absolutely, everybody knows, um, yeah. Yeah, and the Beastie Boys. Those were probably my two favorites. Okay. Uh, like you said, Beastie Boys, they didn't rap very well, but their music was phenomenal. Yeah, well, you know, of course, I think the, the reason why we all love the Beastie Boys so much, we all have a heavy metal background, and they brought mm-hmm. in the distorted guitar yeah. with their mm-hmm. music, and that appealed to us. There was the, the, the collaboration, which brought two cultures, if you will, together. I thought that was right. great. Of course, Run DMC did the same thing with uh, Rock Box, King of Rock. And then, of course, later on to cover the Aerosmith Rock uh, Walk This Way song. Yep. Uh, if you want to go old school, the first rap album, uh, still one of my favorites, uh, Sugar Hill Gang. And then uh, the one mm-hmm. that came after that with Eighth Wonder. I still love that song to this day. Grandmaster Flash. And in my opinion, the greatest rapper ever uh, was, um, really? I can't even think of his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric B. Eric okay. B and Rakim. Rakim, I think, is the best rapper <clears throat> ever. Uh, and believe it or not, along with Eminem, I think they're the, he's the best rapper ever for our skill. Uh, and, of course, Tretch from uh, Naughty by Nature. But, yeah, I I, I loved Run, uh, Run DMC when they came along. And, and even some of the girls that came along, too, man, I thought were really, really good. People don't forget Queen Latifah started off as a rapper. Sure. And uh, she's mm-hmm. really good today. Okay, guys, I'm going to close up here with one funny subject. If you guys got a Google uh, uh, application handy to you, uh, if you type in the 50 most popular women in the world, go look down at number seven and tell me who do you see and what do you think about that? <laughs> well, I don't have it available, but I can only imagine who you're talking I, about. It uh, looks like uh, Fisher's looking. So go ahead, Skitter. You go ahead and guess and tell me who you think's in there. Um, I, I think Oprah's got to be in there. Okay, uh, in the top five. Okay, um, Jennifer no, Aniston, who we no, talked I, I, about I, earlier. No, I only want to know who number seven is. Just one person. Oh, number seven. What number seven most popular <laughs> woman in the world? <laughs> You're not even close, Skinner. <laughs> I got it right here. Tell us, fish. Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's funny stuff right there. I saw that on TikTok and I was like, what the heck was going on with that? What are they trying to tell him? Yeah, it's it's the second time in a week. Oh, never mind. He's got he's got he's been accused of not knowing the meat. Okay, never mind. So it's something. Yeah, but that's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. What a way to end the show on. <laughs> All right, Why fellas. is that people think he sounds like a woman when he sings? Is that that, that must be I, it, that's right? what I wanted to know, guys. I don't know. Nah, I huh. I got nothing. Well, we are up against it, guys. Uh, great show again. Um, appreciate your candor and all the subject matter. Uh, folks, to get all our information, go to our Facebook page and put in at It Came From Gen X, all one word. You'll get all of our 
all of our TikTok and, and YouTube and everything out there, WMVU.org. Uh, so for Keith Porter and Brian Fisher and our comrade in arms who made a special appearance. Wow, we're so uh, lucky. John Coach mm-hmm. Cooper. Uh, <laughs> I am Michael Skinner. Thank you and have a great week. Hey, I'm going to the gym, Fish. Come on, man. <laughs> and we're out. Okay.